Good evening, good evening, good evening. God's blessings on everyone. Good evening. Good evening, good evening, and God's blessings on everyone, and we greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, and we are sharing once again on Monday night uh, for seven, ten minutes or so, however the Spirit lead us, a you know, a passage of scripture. We've been looking at the signs and the miracles in the book of John and the Gospel of John. And tonight we are going to be looking at uh, one of the signs in John chapter 5. And um, prayerfully, as we share this, we will continue next Monday night, possibly with the conclusion of this miracle in that science. And we are seeking out the deeper depths of the spiritual nature of Jesus. And as we are in a Lenten season and now approaching Resurrection Day, as we celebrate together the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. We normally begin with uh, intercessory prayer, and we ask that you make your prayer request known if you wish to, that we might intercede together um, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and we believe in God's uh, word that he does answer our prayers. Amen. So again, blessings and greetings in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. We do realize that we have international and national viewers from many states and places, and we always welcome you uh, to share with us. Most gracious God, we just thank you for this opportunity to share your word. We just thank you for allowing us to be able, Lord, to come together and to gain from what you teach us. We, we, we ask God that you continue to make us apply what we share in our lives and in the lives of others. And we intercede tonight on behalf of any prayer requests that people have in their hearts and their minds that you might do what it is that they're asking because we know that you're able. He, Lord, bless, secure, provide, and give God the strength that the people need even at this hour. And we ask all these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Wonderful. This is the Faith Baptist Church International Ministries. This is a function of the Faith Baptist Church in Corum, New York. And you can uh, get the information about the church and its ministries at our website. Also, we're sharing through social media uh, and other ways that you can reach this broadcast. And um, we just pray as, again as, as we share tonight that you'll teach us through your word as you have done so many, many times. Amen. New York, and you can uh, get the information about the church 
Okay, I just want to double check on something. Sorry for that feedback. Uh, just goes to show you, uh, things are working. <laughs> God be praised. John 5. John, the Gospel of John, the fifth chapter. And let's start from the second verse, I believe. Now in Jerusalem, by the sheep gate, there was a pool called in Hebrew Bethsaida, which has five porticos, and these lay many invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there, and knew that he had been there for a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up, and while I am making my way, Someone else steps down ahead of me. Jesus said to him, Stand up, take your mat, and walk. At once the man was made well, and he took up his mat and began to walk. We might stop there. Now, obviously, uh, certain things are being stressed in this story. One is the length of time that this man was being brought, sat there begging, which all the implications suggest. And um, as you know, it became a source of income for himself, for his family in many cases. And you got to think that, you know, after a while, the whole purpose was to bring him there for that, not to be healed. We all always have to pray about this story. First of all, 38 years, uh, in those days was, was quite a long time in terms of human life expectancy and it always suggests this story that oh we can do things out of habit or we may start off with the good intentions the right intentions and after a while just fall into a pattern of dependency and how often have we gone to God with situations that in the beginning we fully expected to be blessed and things would be turned around. And then after, after a while we just, we just go there with so much, so accepting to a certain degree, even though we're asking, but accepting and not fully believing that God is going to change the situation because we have come so dependent on our being sorry for ourselves. Very, very germane to the Gospel of John. Last week we shared, last two weeks we shared about the young man being healed who was blind from birth. Very germane to the theme that piggybacks on what it is that people believe about Jesus, about the gospel. And these signs and these miracles was, were put there that we might believe 
as John said, many, many other things, many other miracles, great deeds that Jesus did, but I've chosen these seven signs that you might believe, and contingent to believe in was seeing. And, and, and then uh, piggybacking on that is that people were physically seeing but not believing, People were physically not seen, but came to believe. And part of what John says is that with our eyes wide open, we are blind at times. And people are blind to who God is, who Jesus is, who the Holy Spirit is, and the power of God in our lives. So he was brought there. And we know from his answers to Jesus that he really never expected ever to be healed. Maybe at the beginning, maybe yes, maybe he was rushed down there by this myth that, that the water was healing people. And it's another key factor in this story and in the Gospel of John Jesus doesn't need to do anything extraordinary for us to be healed. Sure, he can make a mud cake out of a um, mud patty, out of, out of spit, and put it in someone's eyes and stuff like that. But he can touch somebody and they uh, heal someone, can touch them and they heal. But all Jesus has to do is just speak. As a matter of fact, I would declare that the power of God will go even further than that. Jesus just have to just make the situation happen without in human terms of thinking and and doing anything in particular in particular because the power of God is of such. So we can get contented to a certain degree with our request, not fully expecting for it to happen, and we would be the most surprised person in the world, I'm being a little sarcastic, if our prayer comes true. One of the things that we got to be careful about is this feeling sorry for ourselves. And after a while, our prayers become more like complaints. And after a while, complaints because we want people to feel sorry for us. There's, all, there's, there's a dangerous pattern that this story is bringing out that we have to be careful of. And at the beginnings, we're so gun ho we're so, oh, I mean, we'll... We just believe in it's going to happen now or tomorrow, right away. But after a while, we just become blinder and blinder that God has power to do what he says. The man may have known it was a myth. How many people have we really seen healed by that water? Who knows what it is after a while? that, you know, folk believed about it. Um, and, you know, many people were there of all with all kinds of infirmities, John says, giving the impression that almost, almost no one ever got ill. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, how long did that water stir up? And uh, we know there's a lot of myths that we can read outside the, the, the Holy Rich. Uh, that tells us something about what people believe about angels stirring up waters and people being healed. And that's another thing. We have to ask ourselves at times uh, if we are not here because our way of thinking of healing is misguided. And there's a contrast to how this sign is developed where Jesus just simply tell, told a guy, you know, take up your mat and walk. To the to to how we look at the contrast. Watch this. Uh, how Jesus just simply said, 
get up and walk. To how many times we put so many other things and conditions and situations and things that we do and how we stand and where we stand and how we sing and what we say and what formula of prayer that we might use and and, and, and all this other kind of stuff and whether it's music playing or not and how our, our heads are being touched by some healer and I believe in all that. No, don't get me wrong. But sometimes we put so much stuff, conditions and requisites and prerequisites in our minds about being healed instead of just simply believe that, that we heal. Uh, I'll throw out something there. I'll throw it out. It might sound crazy. But how many people are healed already but but still waiting for some kind of thing to happen? They healed already, but they, they haven't received the healing because they haven't done what Jesus said. Get up. Get up. You heal. What if Jesus said to the man, get up, you heal, and he just sat there? Ah, furthermore, you know the story, those of us who have covered it before. He didn't really hear what Jesus said, like we often do. Jesus didn't ask him a thing about why he wasn't getting down to the pool. Jesus didn't ask him if he had somebody to take him down there. Jesus, Jesus didn't even... Hint of asking him how long he'd been there because Jesus already knew he was there a long time. Jesus can see. And the Holy Spirit knows how long we've been fooling around with stuff and not getting directly to God and be healed. What Jesus asked a man was, do you want to be healed? That's, that's some question. Uh, Jesus is asking folk, do you want to be healed? Do you want to be loved? Do you want to have peace? Do you want to be successful? But we're not hearing that. We're too busy coming out with the excuses. That's all that Jesus asked him. But he went through all this stuff. Jesus says, uh, you know, I'm paraphrasing. Uh, yeah. That's not what I'm asking you. That, 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 all that stuff, you know. You don't have to depend on anybody. Just take up your bed, take up your mat, and go about your business. You've been healed for 38 years, and you just didn't know it. God bless you. And Jesus loves you. And we see you next week. You can still make uh, prayer requests or reach me even after this broadcast has ended. Thank you, Lord, and bless your name.